we're finally back with more Disney Dreamlight Valley and oh my goodness, my friends, I've been playing this game diligently every single day since release day. Well, release early access. I've been popping in for like half an hour to an hour and sometimes even a few hours. No shame. <laughs> it finally paid off because I've unlocked every single biome, all of the current available characters, and I'm working on maxing all the friendship levels out right now. But I thought that I've left my valley untouched, just running wild for way too long. So I thought that it would be fun to hang out with you guys today and spend a little time or a lot of time <laughs> redecorating my little plaza area and getting ready for the upcoming fall updates to welcome more characters and other new content. By the way, hey, welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Kat. Thank you so much for joining and if you like casual games and comfy vibes, please consider sticking around and checking out my other videos, maybe even subscribing. We'd love to have you here. All right, friends, here is my valley. <laughs> Welcome back. As you can see, it's a bit of a mess and I actually haven't done anything to it besides unlock some villager homes and maybe add a little trellis or an arch here and there. I've also maxed out the upgrades for Shea Remy and also Scrooge's store. I've unlocked pretty much every single biome and unlocked all the characters that are currently available. So I thought, no more excuses. <laughs> it's finally time to give my valley, or at least just the plaza in this video, the TLC it deserves. I haven't really unlocked so many furniture items or even crafting recipes yet. I've basically been grinding for the quests so far. I do have to say I haven't been so lucky. <laughs> as far as the furniture items that pop up in Scrooge's store, I've seen some other items posted online that I've never ever seen in my game and they're all so beautiful. So we're definitely going to make do with what we have so far and in some cases even taking bits and bobs from different um, yards. You know, it's we're just borrowing it, not stealing, <laughs> and using it in the plaza area since this is the space that I want to focus on for this video and just in general so far. Since there hasn't been too many houses or other buildings unlocked yet, I really want to utilize this smaller space for now and then as we unlock more, my plan is to expand the um, decoration and the little neighborhoods into the different biomes as well. But for the plaza, I had an idea to create a sort of downtown area or like a community center area where there's a couple of homes, there's the shopping district, there's a community garden, and of course our little um, home as well. I'd love to make this a recurring um, video series on my channel because since the game is still in early access, there's still much more content to come. And as long as we keep unlocking more items and homes and characters, this plaza area and my valley in general will be constantly evolving and that's really part of the fun with this type of game. What I really appreciate with Disney Dream Life Valley is that especially when you're playing on PC, it makes it so simple to just drag and drop everything around and absolutely everything, you know, from every single tree, bush, flower, um, to all the buildings, the homes, and they're also free. <laughs> There's no uh, Tanuki realtor that's making you pay for every single move. If you know, you know, and I think most of you do know. <laughs> so now I'm just taking the time to clear up all the flowers and the dig spots and any wood that are scattered all around my plaza area because you can't actually place buildings or paths or furniture on top of any of these so I'm just making sure that we're starting off with a clear canvas or almost as clear as we can get it at least and we can go from there. After clearing everything that I can, I'm going back and just removing all the paths and finally getting to move the trees, the little lamps and other furniture items 
the buildings off to the side so we can kind of um, get an idea of where we want to move things around. I didn't really have a clear plan for the shopping district and the community garden that I had in mind, but again the nice thing about not having to pay for every single move is that you can just experiment and do some trial and error until you find what you love and change it again if you really wanted to. The only thing that I had in mind at this point is that I really wanted a straight path down the center of where the castle is and that sort of central well area all the way straight down to the stairs that lead to the peaceful meadow. So that's why I started off with building out this path first and then sort of going from there. I think if you have, you know, even no plan, <laughs> you should just start building and again experimenting until you see something that you like and something that sticks. There are so many just talented and super creative people online, so you can definitely head to, I'm sure, Instagram or Twitter or even other YouTube videos to find some inspiration for your plaza or other areas in the valley. But what I like about games like this is that I say it as almost like a virtual sandbox where you can just explore your own creativity and nothing is right or wrong. You can play them however you want, whenever you want, and there's just no pressure. Now I'm looking around to what I want for the centerpiece. I have two options right now, which is this fountain piece or also the um, clock tower that you see on the map there. I'm really interested in seeing how my plaza evolves because like I said, the more furniture pieces that we unlock, I will definitely keep changing things up depending on the mood or even maybe seasonal changes. That would be super, super fun. But in the meantime, I don't have too many options yet. So, you know, I can't be too choosy as well. Another thing you can do besides checking the shopping is to craft your furniture. And there's so many good ones that you can craft. I've barely scratched the surface as far as my furniture recipes go. There are way more and you can see them in the collection section of your menu, but there wasn't really anything that I wanted to build at this time. And also some of the quests that I'm currently working on do need the resources as well. So I wanted to save them for now or well, I thought I did until I saw this beautiful, elegant gazebo. <laughs> when I tell you it was a proper grind to find that 200 dry wood, I was seriously questioning my life decisions at this point. <laughs> so for now, we'll leave that um, for later and just work on the things that I have. I ended up making the path a little bit wider and then adding some street lamps. This was where I was really going back and forth with what I wanted. If I wanted the fountain or the clock tower, I was super torn, but again, just trial and error. I also wanted to add a lot of this red maple tree because fall season and I do really like maple trees. <laughs> Canada represent, <laughs> but also not really. <laughs> I'm a huge sucker for the fall season and fall colors, and I really just wanted that all over my valley right now. A little tip, by the way, if you didn't know already, that when you go into the tree section, you can keep clicking on the same tree and it'll actually produce different sizes from a small, medium to large. So you can really get that natural feel and foresty vibe if that's what you're going for by having the different sizes and shapes of the trees. I do really like that they've done this. I just wish that there was an easier way to select the size. As you can see here, I was kind of having a bit of trouble because I wanted more of the smaller maple tree and I kept getting the giant one and the medium one. 
The next thing was figuring out how I wanted these stores to be. I wanted there to be like a mini downtown area since the plaza is like the center of all of the valley. I wanted this to sort of be like the downtowny, um, city center urban vibes, <laughs> at least as urban and downtowny as we can get with, you know, the three buildings that we have for now. But I really do like how it turned out in the end. And in between the decorating with the top-down view, I do like to pop back into the game mode as well, just to get a feel for how everything looks in this perspective. Since you do, you know, of course, play the game <laughs> this way, it's important to me that everything just flows nicely and also you can actually walk around naturally without things being too cluttered and it also looks good this way. After a while, I decided to move the fountain to the center of the shopping area because I've been to outdoor malls that have this similar feel. I thought that the fountain went really well with the building styles as well of Scrooge's store and the restaurant and Remy's home. It's almost like that old European or old American cobblestone-y feel. <laughs> That's what I was going for in my mind at least, and I felt like a fountain would be perfect for this setting. And no central fountain would be perfect without a little bit of landscaping. What I love about um, Dreamlight Valley as well, besides being able to move buildings for free, is that landscaping is totally free. <laughs> so you can play around with absolutely every tree and bush that you want, every rock, and just come up with a cool centerpiece. Um, mine's pretty simple. <laughs> um, here I am talking about unlimited landscaping and cool centerpieces, but I ended up keeping it simple for this video. Still, I love, you know, if you really enjoy that natural feel or want to have little accents of landscaping, then that's something that you don't have to limit yourself with. Even without a lot of furniture items, you can still utilize the landscaping feature to have nice, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess landmark designs for <laughs> your valley. Here I did end up adding a bit more landscaping beside the buildings and using some of the rocks as well. Added a little bike <laughs> just to make it feel like the space is actually being used and it gets busy. It is our shopping district after all. Finishing up our shopping area with some seating, of course. People can get um, tired after <laughs> their shopping excursion, or maybe they just want to sit and watch the beautiful sunset take in the sights, you know? <laughs> and when all else fails, add more greenery. <laughs> And finally, we finished our little shopping district area, whatever you want to call it. We have our cute little clock tower with some seating and this very um, old downtowny vibe to the shopping district, which I absolutely love and can't wait to add more stores to. So I'll be ending this decoration video here. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll be doing the community garden and our house and Mickey and Minnie sort of shared garden area in the next couple of videos. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope it was nice and chill and relaxing for all of you. And maybe you even picked up a couple of tips and design ideas. I really had so much fun today and I can't wait to do the next one with all of you. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, let me know below what other Disney Dreamlight Valley videos you'd like to see me do. I'm totally obsessed with this game. It's not a secret at this point. And take care of yourselves and I will see you next time.